Hey guys, today I got this radio. It was made by a company called Grunel. It's called a Teledial, a Grunel Teledial. It's a model 588, and I think it was made around 1937. We'll see if they can get this thing going. Uh, as you can see, it's got a little bit of uh, damage to the cabinet. Let's see what we can do about that, maybe. Uh, and if you look at the uh, grill cloth, uh, it looks like it uh, could be original. So yeah, it <laughs> looks like it's original for sure. As I try to look inside, I can see the speaker a little bit. I haven't had it out of the cabinet yet, and looks okay so far as I can see. Uh, we'll get it out and take a look at it in just a minute. It's really interesting is it's got a, a different kind of dial system. See how it turns? As you tune it, the whole dial turns. And uh, it's got some interesting items about it. See these points? These are like a, a primitive type of automatic tuning. You could put in a station program it where you want around the dial and you push it in and turn the whole dial as you go and here it hits the stop but you go the other way and it stops at your program station and you can preset these in different stations and wherever you want to have uh, to listen. Now some of these models had a mute button where it would automatically mute the radio when you push it in so that you didn't hear it scrolling past the other stations as you turned it. This one I do not believe has that. Uh, we can take a look at it, but I don't believe it does. So let's take a look down here at the knobs and the switches. Uh, these are not original, but they certainly are functional. This middle position is a three position, which I believe is short wave broadcast. And it's got a mute position, a third position, so you could turn it to mute. It keeps the tubes hot, but you don't have it playing. Um, that's kind of nice. And this is the volume and on-off switch right there. So uh, let's uh, take a little look around the back. It's kind of a neat Art Deco design with the open corner there. I think the cabinet might refinish okay if we decide to do that. It looks like it's got quite a bit of lacquer left. So I haven't plugged it in. I just picked it up this uh, today from this guy. Is, uh, he's a retired CB, a really nice guy. He picked this up in a garage where he'd got some other equipment. And uh, he took it out and he said he'd plugged it in. And he saw tubes glowing, but it didn't make any sound at all. Uh, so I guess we'll have to take a look and see what we got. I have the schematic for it. It's from Riders. And it's, uh, if I can get this to focus. The schematic is dated 1937. As you can see, it has a transformer. So it's not a series string set. It could be that either the rectifier tube 80 is out or maybe the transformer is out. We'll have to check that. We'll check it early. But it uh, obviously part of it was allowing the filaments to work and we see them all up here. It's interesting it's got it was made during the time when they had a bias cell there. It's like a little little battery there. So it puts out about one volt. It's uh, wired so it provides a negative bias to the uh, to a tube 75, which is the the detector AVC first audio tube. We don't know if that battery uh, is any good. What kind of options we have to replace it? We'll figure it out when we get to that. So not enough of that handheld stuff, right? Okay, so here we are back at the schematic, if, if you can still see that. I was looking a little while ago, I was talking about the uh, the bias cell right here. As you can see, it's like a little battery symbol there. And then I was talking about the transformer windings. And the idea is if, I, if 80 is out, then that'll cause nothing to happen in the radio because there won't be any plate voltage. 
uh, but it might not interfere, but it won't interfere with this winding here, which is for the filament for these other four tubes. So that would cause them to glow, or at least have the the, the current for them to glow. They're not hooked up in, in series. They've each got their own uh, supply and return. So it's not a series string either. So um, you could get glow by this still being okay. If you, you guys watching? Where this is still okay, uh, but then this would be the problem. That doesn't mean the transformer is bad. So we just go in here and check the transformer windings. We'll check 80 and we'll see what we, we get. So we're going to have to. Uh, I guess I can just pull 80 out and see how it looks to see if the filament's open. Uh, we can do that pretty quick. Let me just try that. Okay, I believe this is 80 right here. As you can see, I haven't pulled any of the any of the tubes out. And according to this chart right here, that is indeed 80. Huh. Interesting. I just noticed somebody wrote in pencil R9-2 here. That also happens to coincide with page 9-2 in the riders. So somebody put a note in here, riders 9-2 is this chassis. Cool. Okay, so this is the rectifier tube, 80. It says 80 right there. And the getter the silvery looking stuff. Mirror is not white, so it doesn't look like it's gotten gassy. Um, it's not, not too much evaporation in here. Uh, we'll see. Filament uh, evaporation I'm talking about. So I can't I can't see the bonding wires in here right now, so we'll just check it the, the old-fashioned way and see if we've got any continuity across these. Alright, so this is a base type B for an 80. And the filaments are pins one and four, and the uh, the um, plates are two and three. So let's just see if we get continuity or get uh, make sure this isn't open between one and four. And those are the large pins. Okay, so between the two big pins, between there and there. Oh, I've got uh, got one ohm. I'll try these two here. Nothing there. Yeah, I wouldn't expect anything in these other ones. But between the large pins, I've got about an ohm. So there may be a problem with the transformer. We'll just have to see. It looks like this might be good. I can plug it into the tube tester and see how it works. I may do that in just a minute. So I don't know if you can just set this back a little bit. I can see that I have access to those two points there. So I might be able to go in there and check the, uh, the winding of the transformer directly here. Let's see. This is the filaments I just checked. No, they're going to be tied together here. I guess I can check between the two plates and see if I get any any continuity through here. Uh, let's just see what we got. So the two plates, I believe, are here. I'm not plugged in, right? I haven't been plugged in a long time. And here. Okay, 1.1k ohms. That's great. So I've got continuity through the transformer for that and then this should be probably almost a short it couldn't be a short it should be a winding yeah I'm getting I don't know it's jumping all around but I'm getting uh, I'm getting a check across where the filaments go or the uh, filament winding so that would be the cathode for 80, yeah, I'll be measuring between here and here, and so I am getting something between. You're not watching. So this tube is out. So what I did was I checked just then from here to here, and I'm getting a lot of movement because I'm probably charging some capacitors and things that are in there. But it's not it's not an open circuit between here and here. So that means this this is there, and I just checked a, a few minutes ago and got some. Uh, uh, 
resistance across here so this is not open and if the tubes are glowing that means this secondary is also good so all three of the secondary windings look like they're going to be okay um, assuming the primary is okay but if he said it glowed this is good this is good and now it looks like this is good I can't tell if 80 is bad uh, but what I can do is I can leave 80 out and then I can plug in the transformer and look at what voltages I'm getting but you know, I don't have any voltages written on here, so I don't really know what to check against. I guess you just look at what kind of voltages you'd expect to get out of a of an 80. Uh, but I guess that's the uh, next thing to do is take the uh, take the chassis out of the cabinet and take a look and see what we get. Okay, let's uh, take this thing out and see what we get. Let's set this aside where it's not going to get too smished. Uh, all right, so as soon as I get this thing out, I'm going to want to protect that uh, speaker. So let's see. Nothing's falling around loose. I can see where they put a molly bolt uh, type toggle on here, so this one must be stripped out. How about that? Can you see that? 588 stamped really uh, deeply into the wood right here. something else here. But anyway, looks like it's only being held by two screws right now. Let's get those things out and see what we got. I'll leave that one in since it's on the top and get something to get this one out. Let's get this chassis out of here. Uh, I can reach in and get a few more of these tubes out just to prevent a, a terrible accident. Okay. Don't forget the uh, knobs in the front, right? You were going to remind me, weren't you? So I'll just pull those. Oh, they've got a screw. Okay, I can deal with that. Looks like that's coming back straight like it should. Okay, speaker cord is holding on. This has a uh, it's electrostatic. So is there a plug for unplugging the speaker? Oh, I don't see one. That's a pain. So the speaker stays with the cabinet and the wires. They're not all plugged? You gotta be kidding. Oh, good grief. Yeah, so it looks like the best thing for me to do may very well be to pull the speaker out of the out of the cabinet. Um, I kind of like it staying in the cabinet to keep it protected, but I'm not going to be able to work on this very easily with this box attached to it. Um, but we'll see what we can do. Well, here's our antenna leads, I would guess. So let me see what we can at least take a look at what we have here. So the uh, power cord 
Somebody's wrapped some tape around that here. I guess that's your basic idea of a strain relief. Uh, we've got a number of trimmer locations here. So there's holes in the top here for accessing these trimmer capacitors from the back. Okay, well, we'll see that. Yeah, over here. Need a different pointer. These guys here. So the antenna lines come in. Here's the antenna coil. There's a couple of leads hanging here. I hope that's not part of the winding. Um, I wonder if there's been a critter in here. I don't know. Here's that bias cell. So that's like a battery and that just slips out of there. You used to be able to buy replacements of these and just pop Yeah, so uh, isn't that the way it works, right? I was just talking about the battery and how these things go dead and guess what happened? My camera battery died. <laughs> so there's, there's, a, there's a link here. So anyway, so this is where the uh, <clears throat> bias cell is and this can be removed and pop out and, and they sold replacements of these in drug stores and little shelves and things and this thing can come out. So I'll look at maybe, I might be tempted to put like a watch, watch battery there or something. We'll see how that goes. <clears throat> as far as capacitors go, it looks like this one's a replacement. I'll look at that much more closely later. Um, but otherwise, this was kind of kind of sweaty looking. I don't know when this was really last run with any length of time. <clears throat> so I don't know whether or not they got hot recently or if it's just been like that for a long time. It's not that big a deal. I don't know. We'll take a look at that later. <clears throat> Alright, so looking at the switches. This is the on-off volume switch. Looks like it's all right. And this is a three position. And this is the tuning dial. <clears throat> it's be working pretty smooth. Let's take another look at the top. I don't see any signs of, you know, like there's been a fire or any kind of damage down here. It doesn't look like the transformer's gotten too hot. So I don't see anything here to be immediately concerned with. Let's just take another quick look at what else we got on the top. All right. So we have an electrostatic speaker. <clears throat> so part of the winding, the, uh, the electromagnet, it doesn't have a permanent magnet, is energized by the uh, power from the radio. So it needs to have... It needs to be connected to the uh, radio. It's part of the power circuit. It provides a, a choke for noise reduction and so forth. Uh, you know, I can't tell, you know, I don't know if you can see that in there, but there's like some cloth hanging off of here that looks like it went around the electromagnetic winding. I don't know if you can see that in there. Yeah, so it looks like right in here there's some kind of cloth hanging here. And uh, you can see the copper, the winding of the electromagnet here. Um, whether something's been chewing on this, I don't know. We'll, we'll know when we start to power stuff up, I guess, or I can check continuity on it. So I'm thinking what we can do is we can energize this and see if we can take some measurements of voltages coming from the transformer to see if we're actually getting some uh, voltages out of the secondaries. So that'll verify the transformer's okay, because if it's not, it's going to be a short project. Anyway, so we'll... Uh, let me, get, let me get that all set up and we'll uh, see if we can get some voltages out of the transformer. Okay, so I'm set up now to uh, see if we can take some check of voltages out of the uh, transformer. So what I've got is, I've got a, up here up to the left, you can't see it up here. I've got a, an isolation transformer, I've got a variac, I've got a dim bulb all hooked up together. You know the routine. And so I've also got over here to the left, you can't see it back here behind the, the fluke. I've got a little panel set up over here that's got a fuse on it too. So I've got, got quite a bit of protection. I don't want to lose the, the transformer, right? And uh, so anyway, I'm going to turn this thing on. I'll have the reading of the voltage coming out of the variac here. And then we'll be using this to measure the voltages. So this is the, um, the um, rectifier socket. And this is that other, that other tube socket. I guess it was the uh, IF amp. And it's going to be able to allow me to access the filament voltage. So we'll be checking the filament voltage here. And I'll show you what we're going to do. So first thing first, I'm going to 
plug in the uh, unit. The, there is a bit of fraying of the power cord here, uh, but I'm, I am isolated and uh, I have a dim bulb on there. So if I draw a short, you know, between the dim bulb and the fuse, I think I'll be okay. All right, so we're going to plug it in. Let me first see if the power is on, so I don't have to touch it to turn it on. Okay, power's on. And here's the cord. And we'll plug it in and see what happens. Nothing yet, because I won't have the power on. Okay, so I'm going to turn the power on the Variac on. I've got it set for about 30 volts, so we'll see what comes up. Okay, so I'm getting about 30 volts back here. Uh, AC coming in and this isn't hooked up to anything yet so all we're doing is putting some power in and I can watch my uh, current over here on a separate meter you can't see and I'm at like 60 milliamps so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the uh, voltage up some I'll take it to 50 or so there's 50 volts 52 and I'm pulling still less than 10 milliamps the bulb doesn't have any filament glow on it that I can see, but it's drawing power, so that's good news. So the uh, primary must be connected. So there's 70 volts. Still getting about 80 milliamps. So I'm pulling about 80 milliamps through the primary. Nothing's going to happen since the filaments are not really connected to anything. So there's 90 volts. I'm at uh, 90 milliamps. And take it up. There's 100 volts. And I'm at 100 milliamps, 100 volts, 100 milliamps. So it's going to take some measurements. I'm going to take it up just a bit more. That's a true RMS on the voltage. So we're about 117 volts. And it's pulling 130 milliamps for 7.5 watts, 7.6 watts. Okay, so we've got power going through the primary of this. I see no glow on the lamp, so everything's kind of going okay. So let's take a look here. So one of the things we can do is we can check to see if we get 6 volts across this winding. I don't know where that lamp is right now or I'd check to see if it's glowing. So what I'll do is I can check to see across the filaments between here and here to see if we're getting six volts. Now I can access that through this socket right here. That was a 6D6. And if I look at my chart in this book, 6D6 is a base type 6 Bravo. And 6 Bravo is this one. I don't know if you can see that, but that's uh, Pin one and six, so that's the two the two thick pins on the uh, IF amp. So let's uh, let's give that a try. So I'm set up an AC, and I want to check the AC voltage between the two large pins. So there's one there and one there. Seven volts. Considering I don't have any load on it that's probably just great. So the filament voltage looks pretty good. The filament voltage is secondary on the primary, on the uh, transformer looks pretty good. So let's see. So that means that one's good. Now if we want to check this one, we want to check the cathodes. And if we want to check this one, we would check the uh, the filament or the, the, sorry, that's the plates, the cathodes for this. So the cathode and the filament, if I remember right, let me double check again. I think that was base 4B. It's the two, yeah, so two thick pins is the filament and cathodes directed. So we should get 
the voltage between here and here. I don't know what I'm getting. Five point eight volts on the on the uh, cathode. That's probably right. So five point eight volts. I'm just gonna make a note of that. Five point eight. So the little guys will be the plate voltage. So I just checked. We checked this one a while ago. So we had seven volts on that. We had six point eight volts between these two points. And now we're going to do is check between the two the two large diameter pins, which will be the uh, no, I got that backwards. The 5.8 is on the big pins, which is the cathode, and then the plates will be what I'm going to check next. And those are the, the little the little pins. So this one should be quite a bit higher. Five hundred and seventy volts. I think we've got a good transformer. That's great news. That's great news. Okay, so we had five seventy for the uh, plates, no load, and five point eight on the cathode, no load, and about seven volts on the filaments with no load. So I'd say transformer looks good. How about we uh, put some put some tubes in here and see what we get? Okay, so I got the tubes back in, uh, including the rectifier tube. So uh, why don't we uh, get the power going to this thing? Once again, we're going to track the uh, input voltage here. Okay, let's uh, let's use the signal tracer and see what we can find out about what we got. I'm going to put this on uh, trace and RF. And we'll see what we can get out of this.